I believe in the Second Amendment. It's there written on the paper. It guarantees a right to bear arms. No matter how many times people try to twist my words around, I talk constitutional law. I know a little bit about this. <laughs> I, I get it. But I also believe that we can find ways to reduce gun violence consistent with the Second Amendment. I mean, think about it. We all believe in the First Amendment, the guarantee of free speech, but we, ex we accept that you can't yell fire in a theater. We understand there are some constraints on our freedom in order to protect innocent people. We cherish our right to privacy, but we accept that you have to go through metal detectors before being allowed to board a plane. It's not because people like doing that, but we understand that that's part of the price of living in a civilized society. And what's often ignored in this debate is that a majority of gun owners actually agree. A majority of gun owners agree that we can respect the Second Amendment while keeping an irresponsible, law-breaking few from inflicting harm on a massive scale. Obama, again, has defied the Constitution by pushing to enact more gun control measures. He spoke yesterday about what he plans to do to make it harder for so-called criminals to get their hands on guns. But what he is proposing will hinder law-abiding citizens from the means to protect themselves. I want to discuss what the Second Amendment really stands for, because so many politicians, including President Obama, don't seem to grasp its meaning. The Second Amendment states, a well-regulated militia, being necessary for the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed. So let's break that down. If we look at our history, most of our founding fathers did not agree with a standing army. They wanted a country free from tyranny, and according to James Madison, a standing military force with an overgrown executive will not long be safe companions to liberty. He knew that having an army controlled by a corrupt government would not be beneficial for the citizens of this country. But a well-regulated militia, controlled and populated by the citizens that would stand up against a tyrannical government, would be beneficial and better than a standing army. The necessity of security from what? Security from a tyrannical government. The Second Amendment was not created for hunting or sport shooting. It was created to protect us against those that seek to take away our freedoms. The Founding Fathers knew this, and they knew in order to maintain a balance between the citizens and the government, they had to include a security measure. Plain and simple. The people of this country have a God-given right to own and carry a firearm whenever they choose. Let me say that again. The people of the United States of America have a God-given right to own and carry a firearm whenever they choose. It's that simple. This is where politicians like President Obama, Mayor Bloomberg, Dianne Feinstein, and others can't grasp the facts. Let's put this in terms that people can understand. Shall is a verb that means to be bound by an absolutely necessary requirement. Not is an adverb that is used to express refusal. Be is a verb that means to take place. And infringed is a verb that means to violate or transgress. So let's put all this together. You are bound by an absolutely necessary requirement to refuse to violate the God-given rights of American citizens to own and carry a firearm for the protection of the United States of America against any tyrannical threat of government. So why are gun owners so uptight about new gun legislation? Because we know what has happened in the past. We have seen people like Hitler, Stalin, and Mao disarm citizens and impose a strong dictatorship, all the while killing millions of defenseless people. We have seen religion attacked and mocked while people became martyrs for their faith. So yes, we are a little uptight. 
instead of putting restrictions on guns, maybe focus on tougher sentences for criminals. Or maybe allow more law-abiding citizens the right to defend themselves and this country. But don't blame guns, because guns aren't the problem. Evil is the problem.